So once we are in this situation, we have this table colleagues three, we can compress it even further. Let's do it. And the first thing I do is I sort it. I sort it on the street ID. Let's do it. Now we have it sorted here, zeros, the ones, and so forth. And what this means is all of this, all of these three tuples basically represent a group logically. Well, it's three different tuples, but logically it represents a group. So that, that is a group of tuples where the street ID equals zero. So we could also depict it like this. Here I kicked out the separations among the different values inside the group. And now we're not exactly in the relational model anymore. The relational model cannot represent something like that. Here we now see the relationship. And of course I could do that lexicographically. If we also sort on the second column, so within each group we also sort on the second one. Of course we can do that in a single sort step physically, but now let's do it as two steps. So we did the first one, sorting on that one. Now we also sort inside each group on the second attribute. Let's do it. So not much to do. Here a little bit changed. Let's go back. Here it was one, two, zero. Now we change that to zero, one, two. And again, we can merge the groups because that here, this zero represents a group within that group. So among all tuples that have a street ID of zero, there are two subgroups one subgroup where the city ID is zero and the other subgroup where the city ID is two. Once we did that, we can now think about a different representation. What I want to do is I only store this zero once. Still, I want to reflect the fact that this zero appears three times across three adjacent tuples. And that can be done with run length encoding. So street ID is now changed to a different type that allows me to store these tuples and the tuple is read as value three appears three times, value four appears three times, value five just once, value six appears three times, value seven once, value eight once. Of course, I could also depict it as something like that. I say five comma one, seven comma one, eight comma one. That would be the same thing. So what this means is that the relationship to this other column is kind of lost. So you have to, well, I can keep track of which of the, these values belongs to which value here, but that can only be done by reading all the values from beginning to. So if I read this, I can adjust a count that tells me, okay, these two values alone represent the first six values. So this year belongs to this one. This year represents the next three, that chunk, then that one represents Mike, then another three values go down here, another one goes here, and the final one goes here. That's basically the relationship that is represented by this second value in, in this mini tuple here. But you have to be careful to, to track it. Uh, the problem now is if you just look at one of this and these entries, it doesn't help you too much because you don't know to which other values in the other columns this entry belongs to. This information is relative. So this information just tells you the six is present in three adjacent tuples, but you don't know the information that you should start with tuple eight actually. Yeah? So seven tuples here, the seven tuples before, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is what's represented by those values. And this is afterwards. So the three tuples following these first seven tuples are represented by that entry. But that information is not represented here. So if you just enter this street ID column in the middle, you don't know that. So that is a disadvantage of run length encoding. And there are ways to fix that. We will look at the lab on how to do that. But for the moment, let's do the same thing for the other columns. So city ID, of course, here, we don't have such a big advantage anymore because the, the, the subgroups for city ID are smaller, of course. We, we can't sort those values across the groups here. We can only sort it within the group. And that also means that we expect less redundancy within such a subgroup. Here, 
we still have a lot of redundancy. Those groups are relatively large, as we have seen here. So we have up to three repetitions in the sequence. If we also run length encode the city ID column, we get a 0 0.2 here and a 2.3 here. And it should be clear why this is not a 2.4. Why is this not a 2.4? Well, because this compression was done within a specific group. Again, 8 and 1 belong together. These two belong together. They are within the group. 0 and 7 belong together. And 2, 3 belongs to this group. 2, 3 belongs to this group here. And this 5 here belongs to this. If you go back, we have the situation that within this group 3, everything was also set to 2 here. This 2 actually represents three twos, yeah? three times the value 2 in attribute city ID. This 2 already belongs to a different supergroup, so to say. And that's why we represented it here as a 2, which belongs to this group, and then a 2, 3, which belongs to the other group. Of course, you could also represent it as 2.4 if you want it. But this would mean that this tuple then spans data from different groups of street ID. So there are many options on how to use run length encoding. So bottom line to understand here is if you use lexicographical ordering, if you do something like that, usually the columns that are more to the left. So for those columns, run length encoding pays off more than for columns on the right. So in this situation, typically run length encoding here would make sense on street ID, but here you wouldn't compress the city ID column anymore using run length encoding. There's a natural cutoff line. So advantages of this method, it's beneficial for data with many repetitions. It can be exploited for query processing as well, especially for aggregations. Disadvantages are you might need to sort first. You might need to sort your table, be it on a single column or on multiple columns using lexicographical sort order in order to get those sequences of repetitions. Having repetitions alone is not enough if the re repeated values are scattered all over the table. They have to be adjacent in order to make use of run length encoding. And then we have something similar as in dictionary compression. So the savings depend on the adjacent duplicates over the number of entries. So if you remember in dictionary compression, it was just the relationship of duplicates, the number of duplicates in relationship to the number of entries. Here, those duplicates also have to be adjacent. Otherwise, run length encoding doesn't pay off. And what is really a problem in this method is you might not be able to access single rows anymore as those entries from run length encoding are always relative. There are ways to fix that. So you can use entry points actually as in many compression methods. We will do an exercise for this in the lab. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-silent.de. See you then!